How much um, did your parents pushing you put you where you are? I knew that a college education and working hard to receive one was the ultimate goal and that was going to put me where I wanted to be in life. If I had work to do, it would be like, well, you can go out or you could get your work done. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's your favorite class? It finally clicked for me that I might want to move into the health field after high school. Think about your hardest semester of high school and how much on average you studied per night. They're the best and brightest students in the class of 2015. It's time to pick their brains and learn just how they got there. Hi, I'm Derek Dice. And I'm Robin Nance. Our children's education is paramount. We all want to watch our children succeed, so why not learn from the students who have already achieved the highest levels of academic success? KXY4 gathered 22 students nominated by their schools as the best and brightest. It's our own little think tank to help other parents and younger students learn from their experience and hopefully enter a path to academic success. KXY4's Melissa Luck goes in-depth with 22 students at the head of the class. From the time they're born, our dreams begin of bright futures and Ivy Leagues and graduation caps giving way to success. From the very first page of kindergarten homework, some children define their academic careers. Anybody else think like early on, maybe even elementary school or I gotta be the valedictorian. <laughs> oh, look at you guys, oh my gosh. <laughs> These 21 students have achieved their dream. Sarah Bruns from Clarkston High School heading to Whitworth with a perfect 4.0. Dylan Duntman from Coeur d'Alene High School, leaving for Harvard in the fall. And Mallory Plaster, one of three valedictorians from Gonzaga Prep, who knew she'd end up at the top of her class. And I just remember like, being excited to be in middle school and like have letter grades. And I knew that I just, I don't always wanted to be the best. And I always wanted, you know, to, to get the highest grades and to feel that satisfaction of knowing that I put my best self out there. For many, elementary school is where that drive began. Bulls were cooking on multiples and there's like a hundred of them. <laughs> and they put it face down on your table and then they say go and flip it up and do it as fast as you can. I was, I was the first one done and I, I love that feeling, that competition yeah. and knowing I was better. <laughs> <laughs> So how did they get this way? How do they end up here? How much um, did your parents pushing you put you where you are? <laughs> Surprisingly, few. Almost across the board, these students say their parents left them alone, trusted them to do the work. I knew that a college education and working hard to receive one was the ultimate goal and that was going to put me where I wanted to be in life. If I had work to do, it would be like, well, you can go out. Or you could get your work done. <laughs> True. I don't think I was ever like forced to stay in, but there was an implied, you know, they judged me if I went out. <laughs> I was 15, 16, and I guess at that age I just wasn't taking it too seriously. I mean, I have a single mom and my sister wasn't that great of an influence either. Anybody else from single parent households? Bucking national statistics, only two of them said yes. But all 21 can share stories about long nights buried in books. Think about your hardest semester of high school and how much on average you studied per night. These brilliant minds certainly did not phone it in. On average, they study between three and four hours a night, balancing activities like cheerleading, volleyball, and martial arts. Some days you do do other things in the evening, you go to sports, something else, and then you get home at like 11 o'clock, and then you study for three hours. You get a social life, you get sleep, or you get school, yeah. and then you have to choose. And a lot of the times, all three suffer because you try to devote yourself to all three. I'm a three-sport athlete, and so it kind of takes up my whole year, and I, I wish I had a job, like I wish I had time, um, but I guess that's one of the things that I have given up in order to do everything else that I've wanted to do. How many of you have jobs? Only two of the 21 work outside of school. Rachel Fricky works part-time at her family's veterinary clinic. Christian Cousins works four hours after school with the Boys and Girls Club in Coeur d'Alene. How many of you studied at home? All of them say they study at home. Most listen to music while they do. Almost none leave the TV on. But for some, the distractions are built into what they're studying. Gonzaga Prep went to uh, iPads this last year, Ooh, and so yeah, like having everything at your fingertips is really hard because you can't like get rid of it like in the other room because you have your like science textbook and you're scrolling through looking at diagrams, but then you can access like social media or like Netflix. <laughs> but that's not all bad. While none of the students have ever paid a tutoring company for help in school, they all agree on Sarah from Clarkston's favorite study guide. I use YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Seriously. Yeah. They, yeah. There are 
so many videos. There's a bunch of cat videos on YouTube. Turns out I'm looking in the wrong place. I really concentrated on pre-cal and I just looked up the specific thing that we were unit that we were working on and I found videos on there that helped me understand that better. I like started using it for AP World as a sophomore and there's yeah. so many, like every AP course, they have all these videos that just help you review the base concepts. Mm -hmm. And they just make it so easy to understand with these like crazy cool graphics and everything. More than half plan to major in science related fields in college. Slightly less than half will stay in Idaho or Washington for their four year degrees. Only three consider themselves bilingual. Two of them speak another language at home most of the time. Well, my parents are immigrants from China, so like we, uh, they used to teach me a lot of like Chinese, like texts and literature at home. Those of you who especially like had this drive to be have really high academic success, ever feel like you were giving up something to get that? So I did track freshman and sophomore years, and it was just a really big time commitment, I guess. And so I felt like I couldn't do everything at once, and it stressed me out a lot. And so my junior year, I decided not to do track. I had to give up baseball. I played baseball pretty much my whole life. But um, at the end of sophomore year, I realized that it was too time constraining between academics and debate. And I had to choose which would get me further in life. I mean, if you think about it, like, do I want to be a great dancer? Or do I want to be a great student? Where, where's, where's, where am I going to go with that? Do they regret it? Not a single one. They knew at an early age the relationship between hard work and sacrifice. Now, the next chapter awaits. And despite perfect grades and flawless resumes, they're about to learn about the other sacrifices that come with higher education. How many of you are worried about the overall cost of college and how you're going to pay it off? And you'll hear more about that, getting into college and paying for it, coming up. Also ahead, some of our students making history in their own families. This is a big step that these uh, young people are taking, and it will change the trajectory of their families. Meet the students, first in their family to go to college, when our KXLY4 News Special, Head of the Class, continues. Welcome back to our KXLY4 News Special, highlighting students at the head of the class. For many of our students, going to college was just something they knew they would do, a path laid out by their parents and siblings. Others, though, will blaze a new trail just by taking that next step in their academic career. KXLY4's Katie Curry introduces us to one North Central High School student who is the first in her family to go to college. Success does not come easy, but achieving success, accomplishing a goal, there was no price to match that feeling. Even third grade, I was trying my hardest to be teacher's pet. I wanted to just be at the top of the class. After years of hard work and sacrifice, only three weeks separate Oceana McLeod from getting her high school diploma. I've been working for four years straight, and even beyond that, but it just doesn't seem like it's happening. It hasn't hit me yet. One running start class, four honors classes, and six AP classes later, she can call herself a distinguished valedictorian and the first in her family to go to college. She understands that whatever she can do, whatever she wants to do, she can do. But she isn't taking all the credit. Even with self-motivation and self-determination, it's just, it's better with support. Oceana's biggest supporters, her parents and younger brother. Oh, I'm so proud. She's worked so hard and just to know that she, she set this for herself so many years ago and she stuck to it. Not many people can do that. Forced to support herself at a young age, Shannon McLeod dropped out of high school her sophomore year. She knew when she had kids she was going to let them be kids, but never imagined how much they would inspire her. She uh, inspired me to go back to school and get my GED, and, uh, which I did last summer, because uh, I just couldn't let her graduate before me. As she nears the end of her high school career, Oceana hopes she has made a lasting impression, one that stems further than her title. It's nice to know that I've achieved so many things just for myself. But I don't want to be known as just like, oh yeah, she was like a valedictorian. The smart, hardworking girl you see on the outside is also observant and caring. Always looking at the big picture, the future psychology student hopes to continue to spread the importance of love and self-worth to those who have trouble seeing it for themselves. Try and prove people wrong. That's the best thing you could do because honestly, other people's opinions don't matter. It's the opinion of yourself and what you believe that you should be doing that matters the most. Oshana represents a growing number of local students taking the path to college as first in their family, and their accomplishments are worth celebrating. 
Last month, 52 students from Rogers and North Central High Schools were honored in a dinner and reception at the Davenport Hotel, all recognized for taking this big step in their lives. To be able to break that norm and break that barrier and be able to do something so great as to go to college and open up opportunities not only for themselves, their current family now and their future family is something that's just incredible. Getting into college is one thing, paying for it is enough to keep most parents up at night. Even our standout students say the college application and financial aid process was not as easy as they thought. And many say even getting to where they are hasn't been easy. Melissa Luck has this head of the class reality check. Each of these high school students has their futures laid out before them. Futures they've planned for since those early days of school 12 years ago. I knew that a college education and working hard to receive one was the ultimate goal and that was going to put me where I wanted to be in life. They did much more than just enough. What's your favorite class? I'm actually taking it this year. I'd say anatomy and physiology. It finally clicked for me that I might want to move into the health field after high school. Mine's a AP environmental science and I really like it because it's different and like it's really applicable to today. Like it'll affect our futures. And um, AP chemistry. I mean you get to blow things up. <laughs> <laughs> They elect to take these classes to be challenged and for their own satisfaction. Sarah Bruns from Clarkson plans to major in English, but took pre-calculus because she knew she needed it to be valedictorian. But school, specifically testing, didn't always come easy. Well, for even some students like us, like it's hard to take tests because you just get really stressed out or um, you're just not good test takers generally. About half these students remember struggling through state mandated tests in their early years. But I failed the writing wassail as a fourth grader. I was borderline, I couldn't write, not even close to English, so uh, I kind of gave up. And Trevor Brown from Central Valley tutors students who are plenty smart but struggle at test time. But because these kids just struggle with like a certain aspect, they can't pass these tests and they have to go back and retake support geometry or retake regular geometry and they can't move forward because of these standardized tests that just don't really fit their, their learning style. That you can't really study all the interesting like things that might get kids excited about a subject. You just have to keep chugging through all the material. I think the biggest problem with standardized testing is that it's causing a mind sh mindset shift in students from wanting to learn to just wanting to pass the test. Mm -hmm. And I'm completely guilty of this. I would rather get a four or five on an AP test than learn some cool story um, in Spanish. That aside, those classes and struggles have prepared them for the next step. Harvard, University of Washington, USC, George Washington, some of the best schools in the nation will welcome these students in the fall. Sarah and Paige from Clarkson applied to only one school. Whitworth University is lucky to have them. Others rolled the dice on a handful of schools or more. I applied to 14. In case you missed that, Christian Cousins just said he applied to 14 colleges. You laugh, but the application diligence paid off. USC is covering the cost of Christian's tuition. He won't have the uncertainty the rest of this room now faces. How many of you are worried about the overall cost of college and how you're going to pay it off? Almost every one. The top students, the academic elite, with a full load of extracurriculars and volunteerism that put most adults to shame. They're ready to go into debt to pay for college. Rachel Fricky had to pass on her first choice school because of cost. I think the one thing people don't really tell you when you start this college application process is that financial aid is not actually as easy to come by as it's often made out to be. And Jackson Spencer from Cheney nearly broke our hearts, talking about the night his family found out the cost of college for him was much more than they could pay. I, I saw a look of failure in her eyes, she felt like she had failed me as a mother just because she couldn't help me through this next step and it was disgusting. The rising cost, the uncertainty, the reality for our community as well. We raise the best and brightest and we'll have to wave goodbye to almost everyone. I was actually offered a full ride to Gonzaga, but I'm not staying here. How many of you plan to come back to Spokane after you graduate from college? disappointing news for our community, we can only hope they'll change their minds. Now, one of our students did change her mind, not about where to go to college, but about even finishing high school in the first place. Coming up, Damara Schwartz shares her story of beating the odds and her own self-doubt to not only earn her high school diploma, but a college degree as well. If your child struggles in school, hers is a story you won't want to miss. And later, the moments that change their academic lives, the classes and teachers 
they won't forget. She encouraged me to just keep working and I think she's mainly the reason that I am valedictorian now because I don't think I would have been able to maintain my grades without her. That's coming up as we meet and learn from Inland Northwest students at the head of the class, a KXLY4 News special. Every student we met has a unique story. Immigrant parents, personal sacrifice, all of them leading to where they are now, on the verge of the next chapter in their life. But no one had a story quite like Damaris Schwartz, who almost didn't make it through the first years of high school and never dreamed she'd end up where she is now. KXLY4's Allie Norton shares her story of personal strength and perseverance. Written on this binder, a reminder when the house buying project is due. And we kind of put together like how much it'll cost and how many payments we'll need to make. It's a college assignment. Not only is Damaris Schwartz about to graduate from high school, but at 17, she almost has her associate's degree. I just want to be able to make myself happy and do what I'd like to do in my life in the future and I think it all starts here. Damaris spent the last four years at On Track Academy. It's an alternative high schooling option located next to the Skills Center in Hilliard. Here Damaris and the 419 other students create their own schedule and learn on their own time. They're given the material and if they need teachers help they come to school. You can really learn a lot if you want to apply yourself and focus, but you can also just do the bare minimum and get by. If you rewind five years, Damaris wasn't even doing the bare minimum. Eighth grade year, she stopped going to school and didn't do her work, putting her behind her freshman year. I guess at that age, I just wasn't taking it too seriously. I mean, I have a single mom and my sister wasn't that great of an influence either. And I don't know, it was almost like I was destined to not succeed. And that's when she turned to On Track Academy. I think that Damaris uh, knew what she wanted and she would not stop until she got it. Principal Lisa Matson Coleman thinks this option was a better fit for Damaris. She didn't have to learn with 25 other students and she could incorporate things she liked. For instance, rather than reading Romeo and Julia as a class, she could read a book of her choice. The skills are still being acquired. We believe that students can learn anytime, anywhere. That way students can work or take college courses. That's what Damaris did and she's already completed two years worth of college courses. She'll be heading to Eastern Washington University this fall and should graduate in 2017 at age 19. I mean, I wouldn't have been able to do it if I hadn't come here. I don't think any other school would give me this opportunity to, you know, prove myself and really I challenge myself, you know, and go as far as I can. An amazing story. We are so excited to see what Damaris will do next. Congratulations to her for all she's accomplished already. All right, still to come, one last chat with the 22 students in our KXY4 head of the class, what they'll remember about their high school years, whose encouragement touched them along the way, and the one question that delivered the most entertaining response. What subject in high school did you think was a waste of time? Hear the wide-ranging response their teachers may not appreciate as KXLY4's Head of the Class special continues. The 22 students at the Head of the Class have already taught us so much about sacrifice, about brains, hardwired for success. But in the moments in between, they reminded us that they're still typical teenagers who like to laugh and mostly hated P.E. Here's Melissa Luck with one last look at our 2015 Head of the Class. How many of you are the valedictorians of your high school? Three to four hours every night, four years of high school, 12 years of education. Our head of the class students have put in their time. And while they're brilliant, they're also candid about what was not so great about high school. What subject in high school did you think was a waste of time? Oh, this is going to be so terrible. We have an ethics class in my school. That's <laughs> great. Um, yeah. Oh, love the teacher. He's the nicest guy. Um, but discussing, like, and I go to a Catholic school, so like discussing Catholic ethics 
for 45 minutes a day. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> terrible. I had to take team living, um, which was the worst class I've ever taken. We spent like a month and a half learning how to sew. Um, right now, it's a requirement at our school to take a fine art, and I'm like not artsy at all. And perhaps you won't be surprised about the one class most could have done without. Like, I think if a lot of us had the option to skip PE and take like another math class or another science class, um, then I think most of us would take that opportunity. A person who does sports, a person who is active, shouldn't be forced to play badminton for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell that to Ferris High School senior Ping Bo Zhou, who in addition to being a 4.0 student, also happens to be a renowned badminton player. And even Grace from prestigious St. George's managed to see the long-term benefits of an hour in the gym. I thought it was fun. Like, I would never have played pickleball in my life. <laughs> you can bet they all aced P.E., whether they wanted to be there or not. Our students credit internal drive for their success. Damara Schwartz determined to be the first in her family to go to college. She's getting her A.A. degree along with her high school diploma next month. Mallory from Gonzaga Prep who was dreaming of academic success while those around her were discovering boys. I've always been really self-motivated. Like, it's always been my own personal goal to, to be a valedictorian. Like, like, I have it written down in my sixth grade goal sheet. Like, this is what I want to do. <laughs> but none of them believe they could do it alone. Each can describe a moment that helped them realize their potential. McCall Skay's internship with special needs students, for example. And it's really opened my eyes and it's made me realize, like, I want to be a special education teacher. And for many, a single teacher who made all the difference. Uh, my seventh grade English teacher. Mine's first grade. First grade. I, okay. I still talk to her all the time, actually. <laughs> We're Facebook friends. And, everything. <laughs> and she's my AP Lit teacher. Samantha Pickett wasn't afraid to share how close she came to giving up until that teacher intervened. One of my close friends died. And about that same time, my grandpa died and my friend's dad died and so I kind of hit this really low point and at that point I was kind of like what's the point of what I'm doing like I'm working so hard why and she kind of pulled me out of that and helped me to be like hey you know just because these awful things have happened and you know this is a really stressful time you know there's still a lot of potential here and she encouraged me to just keep working and I think she's mainly the reason that I am valedictorian now because I don't think I would have been able to maintain my grades without her. So It's those moments, those teachers, they'll remember decades from now when they're doctors and lawyers and teachers themselves. Maybe then they'll look back and realize it wasn't being at the head of the class that really mattered, but the people they were becoming instead. You can watch all these stories and get to know each student through their personal profiles right now on KXLY.com. We hope you've enjoyed getting to know them and maybe you've learned something that could help these students in your family. Congratulations to all of them on all they've achieved and congratulations to all the graduates in the class of 2015. We can't wait to see what you'll do next. For Derek Dice, I'm Robin Nance. Thanks for joining us.